uh, Sharon and Hila come down to the planet in a raptor, and they can only save so many people. But it, uh, the thing I remember most about the original show was him coming down in a viper. And there were loads of people collecting around. And uh, as, a, as a young kid, I, I just never seen something where the hero had to leave so many people behind. And I just couldn't work out that it was, it was going to be that way. And I kept on then thinking maybe there are more seats in the Viper. <laughs> <laughs> I was being serious. And it really, it, it, it affected me. Um, and I'm fond of saying this because it's true. The, the big difference is that uh, when, when their planet blew up, uh, then, then they went to the disco. <laughs> I actually, uh, the, the pilots, those of us who play the pilots and the ECOs, Michael Ryan, who's a key director, also one of our producers, he, he insisted that we do a military boot camp. So we did that before the start of filming, which was incredible because it, you know, if there's one thing that those in the military have said to us, and they've come up to us numerous times, we really, really, really captured the reality of, or the sense of it. The camaraderie, the authority, the, you know, the food chain, the, uh, the hierarchy, and, and what it means to be in the military service, whatever branch it is. And uh, so he has to do like a, a two-day or three-day military boot camp. And the guy who instructed us was Ron Blecker. Ron Blecker is an ex-US Ranger. He wrote the manual for the US Rangers. He's a scary man. He's a scary man. I've met some scary men, but this is a scary man. I didn't even know him. We came off the bus. We were told how we were supposed to, we were in like, you know, flight suits or something, and these cadet outfits, and we came off the bus, and I said something cocky or something when we got in the line, and I had to do 50 push-ups. But I thought he was joking. He's like, drop down and give me 50. And he's like, look, you scary man. guy. I was like, come on. He's like, Get down and give me 50. The way he said it, I, was, I got down and I did 50. <laughs> and then we did this camp for three days, and it was amazing because it was the first time that I got to uh, uh, really hang out with Grace Park. And they teamed us up in particular with our, like for instance, uh, Jamie Bamber and Katie Sackhoff were working together. They teamed up everybody so that uh, those relationships that were going to be, that we'd already read the pilot, the miniseries pilot, but we, we hadn't established that yet. So when we went into the show, we'd already formed a serious bond. And we, we did uh, obstacle, obstacle courses and uh, competed against each other over these next couple of days. It was incredible. Long-winded way that we, in the mess one day when we were having lunch, they showed us the, um, the, you know, the original pilot. I'd seen it personally. Yeah, I'd seen it personally, but no one else had. So yeah. Well, uh, one of the things that I love the most about the show is that it's science fiction, but everything is really real. Uh, emotions are real, and the situation everybody faces are real. And one of the things I love most is the relationship between Adama and uh, Laura. And I was wondering how you lived it through the show, your relationship with the actress, and how you felt when, because when you look at her in the show, it's really real. And I wanted to know if you felt like that. Really, with the actress also. <laughs> uh, I, I've said in public uh, quite a few times over the last 10 years that if she wasn't married, we would be. <laughs> you know, so that, that's where it went. <laughs> she, was, uh, she was an extraordinary, extraordinary friend. And I'm friends with her family and I helped raise her kids. And, you know, it's been a quite an experience. So, yeah, there was a true love fest, which continues to this day. I mean, Walter and I see each other. All that you want to know. Not <laughs> <laughs> the godfather of his children. So, you know, they call me Uncle Eddie. And, uh, you know, I have my own space in his house. <laughs> as, as does he and yours. <laughs> yeah. Actually, he, he has spent more time in my house. He has his own suite. And he's got That's a whole other story. story. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see what happens. 
I will never forget the day that Michael and I tried to do a scene with Baltar. And I don't know. Oh my God, that was that was ridiculously difficult to do. This man is a genius, okay? And when he when he when he really goes for the juggler and he knows that he's got you, he just winds in and just keeps on doing it. And and I've been doing this a long time. I can pretty much hold it. And Michael's truly one of the giants in the world of, of theater and especially telling stories. So he, you can't knock him off. You can't knock him off his game. Well, we could get in our game if we tried. <laughs> we were, it was so funny. I never heard this story. Which oh. scene was this? Oh, we, were, we were sitting at the, my, in my room and at the table. It was, it was a scene whereby, I'm not sure, I'm not sure exactly what it was, but it was this thing whereby, you know, Baltimore is a liar. And, he, and not only that, he's a bad liar. And, uh, and, and it's like one of the first meetings with Adama and with Colonel Ty. And just, it's just so obvious that he's just so full of shit. <laughs> it's just obvious. But they're very, very serious. And he's trying to be as serious. <laughs> It was fun. It was supposed to be fun. It was. You were, you held it, man. I can leave you and Michael could not hold it. And, and of course, the director was pissed. Oh, poor Michael Ryder, right here. Right, 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 right. I mean, look how old we are now. We weren't much younger then. And then yeah, we're, we're, how many years do we have in this business? And you know, the, the clock is ticking. We're shooting. It's like a major motion picture. The money we're spending here, and we're giggling like like schoolgirls. And then O'Reilly finally went, "Hey, Mike, we got it." The more he said, the more we lost. Poor Baltar getting more and more serious. This is gonna fit in the show, buddy. But when Mary loses it, that's it. Just go home. It's like when Mary lost it. We'd have these huge scenes where we, you know, so many characters, it's a huge ensemble. We do, if there were scenes where there's a ton of us in there, you just try not even look at Mary or engage with her or even talk to her in the scene. You had to be rude to her because something would set her off and it would usually be ridiculous. And she started laughing. You get really tired, right? Yeah. We were screwed. She couldn't, she would cry. Yeah. And every take you were about to go, we'd all be like, trying not to look at her. And then they'd be like, rolling action. We'd look over and she's like, <laughs> And he would set us all off because we kill an hour. Like, he would, the rhymer would be pulling his hair out. Ron would be walking around in the back, like, hey, see, Ron is stressed out. Harvey, everybody, all of them. Come on, man. Finish the ball. There's not a line there. <laughs> all right, so what's your, what was your favorite drinking hole in Vancouver? So you did. <laughs> well, no, I've never been. Yeah, okay, well, I was going to ask you, what's your favorite? Who wants There's too many to mention. I mean, you know, like, did you take them out to all your favorite drinking holes? Or what's your you know what, being a Vancouverite, I, I, I made a point of, you know, whenever we would go out and drink, we, we trialed. We ate at all the best restaurants in Vancouver, and some of them weren't the best, but they're just nice little places. We ate, we had many, many meals and too many bottles of wine together over the, the course of the show, I can tell you that. Uh, of course, yeah. not as many as the chief. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. That guy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All of this. <laughs> what was actual? What was the actual alcohol in most of the bottles that you guys, you know, ended up drinking on the show? Cold tea. Really? Yeah. That's pathetic. And I think you should write in. Uh, <laughs> so I think I'm just tired of it now myself. This really, actually, it is one of these things. You've got to be taking something like a whiskey or a hot thing, and you see us all do this. It's brilliant acting. Don't try it at home, obviously, because <laughs> somebody can get hurt. But uh, yeah, you could, like, you know, it's, it's like this, and you've got to go like. Right. <laughs> just the amount of times I'm like, can't we just have some real whiskey? <laughs> We're not going to do the scene forever and whatever, just a little bit. <laughs> the answer's never yes. So it's always like cold, cold tea, isn't it? Except for, except for. Well, except for when we shot the 10th episode of the fourth season, which the writer's strike was looming, so we thought we were going to be done. So we were shooting, you know, an incredibly dark scene, and we had you, you weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even trust me with the alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> they were <laughs> <they're laughs> running across the set naked. We tend to be That's what happens when you get them on the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> 
It was, it was the, the day we found Earth. Oh, we were all standing there on the yes, beach. Yes. And where we shot this also in Tuwasan, DC, is a beautiful area. But it was, it was desolate. It was, de it just was dark, and it was one of those typical like dark Vancouver days. It was, there was fog everywhere. It was black. It looked like this post-apocalyptic dead nuclear zone. And we're like walking through the sand, looking the wreckage of what was supposed to be home, and you know something. And there's, there's nothing left. And we made a point. We said in the last couple of days, this could be it. Because if the right oh, strike right. went on for a long time, that would have been the last episode. So of course, Douglas, the chief, brought a ton of single malt whiskey. And you know, I was trying to pace myself, but there was a point where we were all in the trailer, we were playing music and just like slamming back the whiskey. There's a ridiculous shot of me and Eddie and James and Truco all nuzzled up in Eddie's trailer. We're pissed drunk in that picture. <laughs> and we did act after that. So we were intoxicated when we did that scene, for sure. I forgot about that. <laughs> so now that you've you know, done Battlestar Galactica and this massive uh, kind of project, do you have anything else that you could think of that would equal that? Any questions, like dream projects that you'd love to be able to get to that could live up to something like that? I, I'm genuinely, like, uh, in, in some personal way, in search of something like it. I'm genuinely not sure what it would be, but uh, you, uh, there's so many people who were so instrumental in making the show as incredible as it was. I, I think chiefly the, the writers, really. And then, you know, the design element and et cetera, et cetera. But it's the material, it's the writing. Um, and uh, I haven't, in five years, haven't seen anything even remotely close. But I would imagine having, it's a bit like you get addicted to something. Genuinely, the, the show, as you know, is really, what's the word, serious on some level and brutal and uh, deals with very adult themes. And after a while, you kind of get into that mindset where you actually want to explore those avenues. You want to do that kind of stuff. And most, most of the stuff I read doesn't, doesn't come close. It's just, uh, it's not as exacting. It's not as clever. It's not as uh, political. So uh, I'm sure I'd speak for all of us in the sense of if there was anything like it ever again. And that's not necessarily on a spaceship, or it's not necessarily science fiction but an incredible ensemble cast, all working on their own specific agendas. That, 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 would, be, that would be kind of incredible. I think you should write in. Uh, <laughs> How about you, Hogan? Okay. 